بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة الأبدية على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين السلام عليكم my sons and daughters ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله today we are going to take one more surah from the short surahs and this surah is like surah al-kawthar surah al-kawthar was very short surah بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطناك الكوثر وصلي لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر ذي السورة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر So this surah is also a short surah and uh, So what is this والعصر العصر has so many interpretations Interpretation number one Time of Salat al-Asr which is an important time because Salat are obligatory. It seems that how nowadays our Mu'mineen they sleep on Salat al-Fajr and they do Salat al-Fajr Qadha and there's negligence of Salat al-Fajr so that goes into Wailun lil Musalleen okay they will not be eating Sahoon alladhina hum an Salatim Sahoon they are going to be uh, uh, grilled in the hellfire for negligence of Salat so that, that those days when after Salat al-Dhuhr they will become tired, they will sleep and they will miss Salat al-Asr so the importance seems to be like it was given to Salat al-Asr at that time because Salat al-Asr was missed by many people it seems like that in our time Salat al-Fajr is very important because Salat al-Fajr is missed by many people regardless so one of the opinion is Salat. There are so many other opinions. I'll mention few important opinions which has an impact because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a qasam, this is a qasam, wal asr, by asr. What is this asr which Allah makes qasam? It must be something very important for the human being. Okay? Very important for the human being. What is this asr? Number one, they said, or let me give you the chronology first, the timeline. Before Prophet Adam والسلام, there were creatures, they looked like us. They were similar to human. They walked like us. They were erectus. Okay, they walked like us. They like Homo sapiens and Neanderthals and Neanderthals and all these before us. One hundred thousand years before us. They found these fossils, which they look like us. But they were not human. Why? Because the difference between human and animal is intellect. So they look like us, but they were not intellectual. There were creatures looking like us. They were looking like human, but they were not intellectual. They were animals. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, to bring the intellectual direction in the, in the, on the earth to teach those who can learn how to become human and live like human. Okay? Focus with me on this, these three points I'm going to mention. So, what happened? The time of Prophet Adam, see the time, Asr, the time, the Asr, the era, the time of Prophet Adam salam, was bringing the, uh, the people from animal system to human system. So Adam والسلام, was sent to bring these people towards humanity, towards intellectual, being intellectual, use of intellect. Now, so the first human intellect was Adam because previously they were not human. They, they, they looked like human, but they were like somehow uh, animal type creatures. So that is number one. Remember one time and that time was very important to bring intellectual life on the face of the earth. Benefit for the human or not benefit? If benefit, then this may be the qasam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring in that intellectual enlightenment on the face of the earth. Remember the angels when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was creating Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and he said, Inni ja'alun fil ardi khalifa. I'm making khalifa on the earth. They said, Ya Allah, are you going to make these people who are going to do bloodshed, going to kill each other, 
and going to uh, do facade and corruption on the earth. So uh, this was angels. So some scholars they say, why? How did angel know that this one, Adam alayhi salam, with God is creating, would cause facade? Some scholars say because they had looked people similar to Adam alayhi salam, like similar to human. And some uh, some hadith they call it nasanis, nisnas, plural of nisnas. So so angels have seen people looking like Adam. Maybe Neanderthals, maybe the Homo sapiens, maybe before, maybe on other planets. All they were fighting each other like animals. So they were like animal. Like how lions, they fight with each other and uh, cats and dogs. and So they were like animals. So Adam brought, brought this intellectual enlightenment. So Adam's era is a very important era. Okay, that's number one. Interpretation of Wal Asr. There's so many interpretations. I'm choosing the the one which are very most important, which has great impact on the life of human. And this Asr from Adam alayhi salatu till Khatam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From Adam till Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was all the Asr of enlightenment, intellectual enlightenment. That means there was a development, there was an evolution, intellectual evolution from Adam alayhi salam to Khatam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The time of Khatam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the Prophet was sent, this is also another Asr era, the time of the Prophethood of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What, how was it important for the humanity? Why is it very much important? It completed the religious legislation. It completed the Islam which started from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, because we don't have two Islam. We have one Islam which started from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, and continued, continued, continued until continued developing and evolving and, and adding up and by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their, his prophets until it became complete and completely sealed by the lock. And what was the lock? Vilayat Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib on the day of Ghadir. So this message of God, the era of God is one of the important asr for the humanity. Th that's why we, 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 we celebrate on Ba'th and Nabawiyyah. Or when the Prophet started propagating his message, we celebrate that day. Why do we celebrate? Because it was an another level of enlightenment. So first level of enlightenment was from, inter, from animal society to the intellectual society. Then the second one was from the intellectual society, humanic society, to the um, godly society, Irfani society. Okay? So how the, the, the whole legislative system was developed. Now is the time from the Prophet wasalam, to the coming of our Imam that people, they practice this. So the era of the Prophet was an enlightenment time. The time where the law com was completed, the legislation was completed by Prophet wasalam, and the message was completed in a way that there is no messenger after Prophet wasalam, except for the imamat only. So the imamat would continue, but the message stopped. So that was an error, that this is the final message until the day of judgment. So this is another asr, because it was a very important time, the time of the message of Prophet And then after that, the, 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 the Muslims, they are trying to develop, develop, develop. Some they pop up like Sheikh Bahjad, in this highest level of Irfan, and Sayyidi Sistani, and uh, Muqaddas al-Ardabili, and uh, Sheikh Abbas al-Qummi, and this great Urafaz. Okay? So, so, so there was a production. But there will be a time where too much intel, uh, spirituality will be um, embedded in, in the Islamic uh, legislation. It's already there. But too many people will start practicing it. And those who will be the pioneers will, be, will, will, will arrive uh, 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 to receive the Imam Ajjalallahu Ta'ala for Ajjal Sharif on the arrival. I don't know if you've seen these clips of arrival or not. So this is the time where the, 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 the uh, Imam Mahdi will appear. So now we have a third era. So first era was Adam's era, uh, enlightenment of intellectuality. And second era was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The enlightenment of complete legislative system and complete religion. And now we will have the enlightenment of the spirituality 
and the angelic society. So after the 12th Imam, what will happen? People will develop themselves further. Everyone will become like Sheikh Bahjat, for example. Everyone in the society will become spiritual. Everyone will become like angel above the human level. You see, a human, if he does wicked things, becomes worse than animal, goes all the way down. Like the age before Prophet Adam a.s. If he remains human, okay. If he does his spirituality and bond and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he becomes above the human. He becomes angel. So like Sheikh Bahjat and Sayyidi Sistani and Salman al-Farsi and Abu Dhar and all these are angels on earth. They do not think of committing sins. They do, they do not think of committing errors. So this is the angelic nature of a human being that it goes about. Like Shaitan. Shaitan was jinn and jinns were like similar to them animals okay so shaitan was like animal then he became jinn like uh, not he became he was jinn already but his nature was animalistic nature then he became jinn that means like human in our humanity then he started developing his spirituality until he became like angel so allah kept him among the angels so angelic so he lived he, he, he developed himself he his iman evolved until he became better than the angels. So he was top of the angels. So when Allah told uh, the angels to prostrate to Adam a.s. He was on the top of the angels. But he said no, 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 no. The moment he said no, arrogance, ego. It came all the way down. Not to jinn. Worse than jinn. Animalism. And this happens to human. So people like Yazid. They are no more human. People like Yazid are worse than human. People like Yazid, people like Shimmer, people like uh, Omar ibn Sa'ad, all these people, murderers of Ahlul Bayt, uh, haters of Rasulullah, Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, all these are not human. They are worse than human. And when you, when you, uh, you, you are human, you start developing your spirituality, you become better than angels. Like Salman, Abu Dhar, Miqdad. So, the time of the Imam Zaman, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala, Faraj al-Sharif, will be to develop the human society from humanity to angelic society. Everybody will become like angels. Not infallible. They could fall down. But they will strive, control the, their nafs, observe patience, and they will reach that level. Level of angelic, angel, uh, 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 angelic society. So that will be Asr of Imam Mahdi Ta'ala is one of the times also which is very important for humanity, very beneficial. From that time, human will start to develop to become an angel, angelic society. So, again, let me summarize this. From Adam Salam's time, was it important? Yes, it was important. Okay? How was, how was it important? Because it brought the humanity from animal nature to intellectual nature. He taught them to practice intellectual, intellectuality. And then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam completed the legislation. So this was be the legislation, a blessing of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for the humanity until the day of judgment. But it needs development and people will fail. People like Yazid will pop up in the Islamic history. People like Shimmer and all these people, murderers of Ahlul Bayt. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's um, um, uh, uh, curse be upon him and damnation be upon them and deprivation of his mercy be up, uh, away from them. So these people, uh, so this society, when the Imam Zamana will come, so this society was enlightenment of uh, legislation. So legislation and akhlaq and moral values were completed with the time. Uh, what did the Prophet say? In makaram al I have not been sent except to complete the moral values so this will be the time moral values and then until it re reaches the asr time of the whole so we have asr of adam asr of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from adam till prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam till the time of the whole of imam so asr 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 so we have so and all of them are important but could this be for all of them yes ayat of the quran are applicable for everything which is suitable uh, uh, and, and, and matches its meaning. 
So Allah swears by the time, wal asr. Okay? What does that mean? That means this era is very important for humanity. What are the eras important from humanity? From era of Adam alayhi salam till Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. From Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam till Imam Zaman ajallallahu ta'ala. And from Imam Zaman and onwards. All these are, we can consider these three eras, we can consider the one full era from Adam till the day of judgment which is beneficial from you, for every human being. This is done. Well, Asr. Then, Inna l-insana lafi khusr. Human is in decline, declining state. Now this, here, can, we can have a fourth meaning of Asr. What is that meaning? Which befits the whole scenario of the surah. And what is it? When human is born, Allah has already fixed his, uh, his, his life on the earth. He will not live more than that. He will not live less than that. Allah has made it. It's mentioned in the Quran. It does not increase. It does not. So Allah has made, for example, Allah has made a life of somebody 80 years. Okay? How many? 80. 80. So when the child is born, once he finishes first year, we celebrate happy birthday to you and all those kind of things. But the child has lost one full year of his life which is destined for him. Okay. Next year, the life increased or decreased? Decreased. It's now 78, 78 years left. Five years more. Decrease or increase? Decrease. How much? So it was 78 and 5. So 73 years left from his life. 10 years gone, he celebrates. How many years are left? 83. Three After three years, he celebrates. How many left? Se uh, 70. After 20 years, he celebrates. How many years are left? 50. And he's enjoying happy birthday to you and this and that. Well, you should be crying. You should be reciting majlis. Oh, my 20 years have gone. Oh, my life is only 50 years are left. However, if you do good deeds in your year, then you deserve a celebration. You deserve to be thankful to Allah. Like after Eid, after holy month of Ramadan, we celebrate Eid. So you deserve to celebrate. Why? Because you were successful in your last year. You tried your best to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not please the shaitan. You deserve a happy birthday. Okay? So if you want to continue happy birthdays, continue happy birthday. This on this aspect that make your year the best of the years and then celebrate the birthday with full joy. Okay? Will you celebrate? <laughs> but celebrate properly. That means don't do evil. Don't do bad deed. Don't do wrong. Don't do haram. Do your wajibat. Do good deeds. Please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every moment of your life as much as you can and celebrate that birthday even if your life is like 20 years left but you be thankful to Allah that ya Allah thank you for allowing me to offer your salah just your salah if you offer daily for one full year you deserve to celebrate okay so don't worry about what I said you need to recite a medlis no 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 celebrate your birthday because you deserve it because you offered your salah entire year and you're kind you're kind to your parents you're good you try to stay away from evil. So so, so even if all this is not there, only Salat is there, you deserve a good, jolly birthday. So, this, this concept, Wal Asr, Inna Linsana Lifi Khusr, that means what? He has given this age, 80 years, every year is declining, 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 Khasara, Khasara, Nuksan, loss, 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 until he dies. Except for those who build their hereafter, there is no loss. Remember, you deserve a celebration. So, his 80 year became 70. In these 10 years, he served Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good. Then you were from those who did four things. What are those four things? So, human is in loss, loss, loss. Except for those who believe. So, count with me. I may ask you at the end of the session, how many things 
which makes the human instead of declining further it starts to incline in spirituality yes physically is declining his age is declining but he's building his eternal life so that is not a loss at all when you focus on your hereafter when you focus on the eternal life that is not a loss at all illa alladhina amanu wa amilus salihat they believe and they do good deed so only believe is not in, uh, not sufficient no because you can't be believer and not practicing you can't say i am a mu'min i believe in god but not offer salat not offer fasting not offer zakat not offer khums and, not, uh, and do haram things how can you be believer that's hypocrisy that's the fake belief so illa alladhina amanu they are not going to decline yes physically they will be declining but they are building their hereafter so they are going up and up and up wa amilu salihati they do good deeds وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ they, they tell others to do good deeds. Righteousness. They teach the righteousness to others. And then you know when you teach righteousness, when you do Amr bil Ma'ruf, there's always headache. People, they give you headache. People, they trouble you. People, they torture you. Be, oh, what? mind your own business. Why are you talking to us? Yeah. So, so therefore, there's too much pain comes out of telling others to do good do, deed. So what happens? وَتَوَاصَوْ sabr. So they teach them to to do sabr as well. Okay. So this is a gist of surah. So basically, human life is in declining. The years are getting less and less and less. However, if he is doing good deeds, if he is believer, doing good deed, encouraging others to do good deeds, encouraging others to observe patience, then he will for sure be inclining upwards. Some of the hadith mentioned about the benefits of this surah. The benefits of this surah, and just because I don't have that much time, if you recite this surah in your nafila, you will come out with your enlightened face on the day of judgment. You will be glowing, you will be shining, and Allah will let you enter paradise. Then he, another, whoever recites surah al-asr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the patience until when he leaves this, uh, leave this earth, he dies, he will have, he will die on the state of patience like ahlul bayt alayhi salatu they left this world and they were patient and he would be with the uh, with the uh, people of truthfulness righteousness and that's none but wilayat imam ali ibn abi talib and amir al-mu'minin salamullah alayhi's group so therefore another hadith said that whoever recites this surah then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will seal his life that means finish it with with the good and he will be with the righteous group, with those who are on the wilayat of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. And one more benefit they mention somehow, it might sound strange to you, but try it out because it's not one hadith, several hadith indicating that if you recite Surah Al-Asr on one thing and store it, that stored thing will be secured. Because many times, you know, when you store food, after some time you open your store, you see some ants and some small insects and bugs uh, crawling inside your food, inside your flour, rice, these are things. So if you recite Surah Al-Asr on the food and then store it, uh, it will be secured from the bugs and all these kind of things. Um, or before they used to uh, bury important work, letters uh, under the ground. So the rain will come and destroy them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect. Alama uh, Tabatabai says that إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Iman on the wilayat of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْحَقِّ عَلَىٰ تَوْسِيَةٍ ذُرِّيَاتِهِمْ So they will encourage people to follow Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib and follow his descendants. Okay? None other. Follow Ahlul Bayt Ali Muslim. These are the tawasu bilhaq. And when you teach others to follow Ahlul Bayt, there are people they will hurt you, torture you, kill you, murder you. So then you have to teach others to observe patience as well. Uh, in, uh, in several narrations narrated surprisingly from our Sunni fellows that these ahadith which are mentioned in uh, some of our Sunni fellow books they are also talking about what? They are talking about that asr is the inna uh, linsana lati khusr the declined person is Abu Jahl and the one who except for the one who has believed is Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib several narrations uh, narrated I mentioned in Arabic it indicates that and regardless uh, and about the hadith of kawthar i did not mention this in the previous session 
because the time was short that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Kawthar is a huge nahar and there are houses of my uh, Ahlul Bayt and houses of Shias and but this river will be uh, those people who hate my uh, Ahlul Bayt and they killed them and they violated the covenant which was made with me the covenant of Ghadir obviously they will never be even given uh, from the Kawthar and then uh, finally uh, we come back to Surah Al-Asr again Abu Jahl and all these people were khusr they were declining and the Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib is the one إِلَّا الَّذِينَ amanu and then وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ uh, all this is Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib and Abu Huraira surprisingly we don't follow Abu Huraira we don't take Abu Huraira because Abu Huraira was in the camp of Muawiyah and Muawiyah's arch enemy of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib and enemy of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib is enemy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so Abu Huraira narrates I don't know how did this slip out of Abu Huraira he says wal asr inna al-insana lafi khusr is Abu Jahl illa alladhina amanu focus with me what Abu Huraira says the believers and those who did do good deeds are Ali wa Shi'atuhu. Ali yun wa Shi'atuhu. It's Ali and Shi'a. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, An ibn Abbas, he says, uh, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib was the first of the believers. First who did good deeds. He was first who prayed with Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First to worship Allah on the face of earth with Rasulullah. And he encouraged others. Bilhaq. That means Quran, and he, uh, he le uh, le learning of the Quran and teaching the Quran from Rasulullah, learning of the learning of the Quran from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Teaching of the Quran was one of his important priorities, and he was 27 years, and he used to encourage people to do good, uh, to observe patience. So Allah subhanahu wa taala, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told Imam Ali, observe patience in this dunya. And uh, secure Fatima al Zahra al Islam, protect her and collect the Quran after I die and uh, fulfill my loans and debts and wash me after I die and uh, uh, build a, a wall around my grave so that uh, women would not disturb the grave by sitting on that. Uh, like many times when you go to the cemetery, people just they sit on the graves if they're tired. So, Wausahu and he, he gave him wasiyah to secure Hassan and to secure Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam and that is the watawasaw bis sabr that is what watawasaw bis sabr wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alayhi tayyibin al tahirin tomorrow inshallah we will have a'mal as well so I don't know maybe during the lecture time after the lecture, lecture time uh, we have not yet decided but inshallah tomorrow we will let you know uh, in our session so hopefully uh, we will meet tomorrow and we'll have a small musibat of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib because our medlis mainly will be in Swedish uh, and there are so many as majal is happening in Arabic and English so I will just mention a little bit of musibat and that's it but if you want you can go other places and attend the majalis of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib and, uh, and here we have uh, the question for today the question for today how many verses are there for Surat Al-Asr how many verses are there for Surah Al-Asr? Uh, including Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Remember, including Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Send me the answer on this WhatsApp which is uh, given to you. Okay? Wa sallallahu ala muhammadi wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We hand over to Ustaz Hassan now.